What's going on guys? Today I have one of the coolest cars on the market today by any means. It is the Kia Seltos and today I'm going to show you the Kia Seltos and for one the top trim and two one of the brightest colors you can get star bright yellow exclusively here at Carriage Kia of Woodstock. So this is where this car is at right now. So today we're gonna to take a look at it. I'm gonna show you why this thing is a lot of bang for your buck and why this is one of the coolest adventurer cars you can get. Don't forget guys, definitely like this video, subscribe to my channel and click that bell because I'm gonna definitely show you some of the coolest cars and I'm gonna show you everything from exotics to compact SUVs from all kinds of brands, all kinds of uh, dealerships. We're gonna take you through these cars and we're gonna show you what they're all about. So let's talk Seltos. So this is Kia's entry to the compact slash subcompact, depending on what market you're looking at, um, SUV slash crossover. This is based on the Kia Soul, just different sheet metal and the option of all wheel drive, which this one has. So let's talk styling, right? This looks very high end. It looks very nice. You can see you've got this nice garnish here, kind of rugged. You've got this LED strip that goes from the actual headlight unit into the grill, full LED headlights, because this is an SX model, and you do have these LED turn uh, signals that look amazing. Look down here, you got projector LED fog lights, look absolutely amazing. In this color, it's gonna be a love it or hate it, but I actually love it. The star bright yellow is one of my favorite. Looks like a kind of a honey mustard yellow, but I love it, so love that. Um, of course, you got a nice grill here. You notice that the garnish here actually kind of fades in towards the middle, right above the radar cruise control brick. So that looks really nice. Outside of that, you will notice there's kind of a slant up here. This is an all wheel drive model, so it gives it more of an approach angle. So if you do actually decide to go a little trail riding, this thing is actually more than capable of it. So let's talk about the rear of the Celto. So this is actually where I think the design doesn't necessarily meet the front end. It's a little bit more generic than the front. The front definitely has a statement to make, but this one has a statement to make, but only when you look in the finer details. For example, the lighting in the rear, it's kind of a tiered mountain system, something really cool there. And then on top of that, you do have this reflector that is actually tastefully put in place. These faux exhaust tips, which look really nice, even though it's faux, I still like it a lot. A lot of car companies are doing that nowadays. I think it still looks amazing. So. Really cool there. I do like this garnish back here. I do like that they blended the reverse light into this garnish, looks really nice. You do have a backup camera, electronic release for the tailgate, and then you do have this plastic cladding, which is very fitting for a car such as this. So you're probably wondering how much is this Seltos? A fully loaded Seltos SX such as this one can range between 30 and $32,000, which honestly, is not that at all so this one does have the lifestyle hitch right here so if you want to put a bike rack or anything on there you can definitely do that not really recommended for towing but why would you anyways so and then because this is actually listed as a suv from kia's standpoint they actually do give you blacked out glass in the rear something they call privacy glass man look at those lights they look so good <clears throat> inside the interior of the Celto. so for one I want to look at the door because the door is beautiful. You got this piano black gloss trim, which most people don't like, but I do. You have these speaker grills that look like mountains. Cause again, this is an adventurous vehicle. They give that motif there on the speaker grills. You do have a Bose audio system. Other than that, nothing too crazy about the doors. Looking at the interior, you can see it is actually a synthetic leather, but it is really nice. Power driver seat. The passenger is going to be a manually adjusted seat, but nothing too interesting there now getting into the vehicle you're going to notice one thing for sure is holy cow the roof line it is so high i have a ton of space here and then once you actually sit in the driver's seat you're going to notice how well appointed it is so i'm actually going to close the door here turn the car on so like i said this car stickers at about thirty thousand. $415 as this one is equipped okay and with that you get everything from a special instrument cluster with a digital screen in the middle you will get the bigger 1.6 turbo motor 10 and a quarter inch screen there of course you got three widgets that you can choose from and then you can see you've got navigation you will have Bose audio system which is one of Kia's newer audio systems and then look at that frameless mirror Woo! 
that looks amazing. I love mirrors. Everybody knows I love mirrors, and that's amazing, okay? Then you look down here. One thing that I notice, no dual zone climate controls. I'm unsure why they did that, but they did do that in the Seltos. Like I said, this one is fully loaded. You do not have dual zone climate controls. You do have three stage automatic, so you can actually choose high fan speed, medium fan speed, or low fan speed. But again, both passengers are gonna decide on uh, one temperature, okay? You do have a wireless charger up here, so you have a pad there, just lay your phone on there. You do have your USB for uh, information transferring, so Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you do have your fast charge USB there, and then your 12 volt power outlet. You do have a storage pocket here, and then over here you have your uh, shifter for that seven speed dual clutch transmission mated to that 1.6 turbo four, and then you do have drive mode selector. So you can see here, sport, normal, smart, I'll go through those in a little bit. Electronic parking brake with auto hold. So if you're feeling lazy in traffic, just press the auto hold button and you can easily do that, okay? You got heated seats there, there, and then a non-wheel drive lockout button there. So that way, if you wanna give it a 50-50 split to the front and rear axle, you can most definitely do that. You do have downhill brake assist, which is also nice. And then just something that's really nifty is if you want to, you have another sport mode here for the transmission if you push it to the left while in drive, okay? Now, let's look at the steering wheel. Steering wheel is actually very nicely shaped. I love the shape of Kia's newer steering wheels. I feel like a steering wheel really makes or break a car, and in this case, it makes this interior so handsome. You got your speed command button, your mode button. Of course, you've got this nice uh, faux metallic finish here. Looks really nice and feels really good. Of course, you have a plastic finish for these buttons here, as you'd expect. And then you have the same thing over here, symmetrical. And then gloss black on the trimming of the bottom area of the steering wheel. On the left hand side, of course, you got your buttons for your auto start stop for the motor, lane departure warning system, illumination, and then your traction control. Nothing out of the ordinary there. And then of course, just like many other Kia systems, you can scroll through any of these screens and you can see whatever you want, including this, which this is a real time uh, visual of your all wheel drive system. So it can tell you while you're driving how much power is going to each individual wheel. But in addition to that, it can also tell you the steering angle of the wheels, which is also nice. I'm not in drive, so it's not going to do that. But Kia allows you to see that. Tire pressure, nothing too interesting there. Fuel economy, accumulated info, drive info, drive mode, transmission temperature, which I'll explain why in just a moment. So let's go over the drive modes. So here you get your drive mode selector button. Twist that. Sport mode, so it tightens up the steering, definitely changes the shift points, makes the shifting more aggressive. Then you got normal, which is a neutral setting. Smart mode, the car will actually switch through the drive modes on its own to actually dictate the best form of driving for the car. So, and these are on the fly. Now, what you can do is look at the transmission temperature. Why is that important? This car has a seven speed dual clutch transmission. So if you're doing any off-roading or anything like that, if you want to monitor the temperature so that way you don't have to see if you're overheating the transmission, you can do that. Very neat. Infotainment. So this is one of Kia's newer infotainment screens. Of course, it's very, 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 very intuitive, but also very responsive. Of course, you can do everything from pinch to zoom, all the way to navigation info. You can see here, nothing too out of the ordinary. Super cool. So let's talk about seating in the back. So there's a bench seat only available in the back for the Seltos. I want you to look at how much room I have. So the front seat is actually where I would put it. And you can see I'm five foot nine. I've got more than enough space. I've got a lot of headroom because of that higher roof line. And then just the distance between me and the chair in front, it's really nice. Um, I'm gonna go through a little bit more in terms of what you'll find if you're sitting back here. So let's see. Vents for the rear passengers, a fast charge USB and a storage pocket. Outside of that, you're not gonna get a storage pocket on the driver's side seat back, but you will on the passenger side. I do think that's actually very odd. Up top, you do have LED lighting, which is very neat because if you need to adjust it, 
just simply hit that and you're good outside of that nothing really to mention here if you want to you can fold the seats down they are going to be a 60 40 split so you have the levers on the shoulder pads so and then the same design philosophy in the back doors as well you still have those mountainous speaker grills and then that gloss black trim the seltos you're not going to find anything too crazy nothing worth mentioning like i said the seats fold back you got this cargo cover and then underneath you're going to find a spare tire with the wheel locks and other accessory for the tow hitch nothing worth mentioning you do have an extra speaker there because the bows and then a light there nothing crazy so stepping into the seltos the first thing i want to point out is visibility in this thing is absolutely amazing again this is a kia soul with a different shell essentially but the visibility in this thing is amazing i absolutely love it going over a speed bump i can tell it's got a very firm suspension but it's still very comfortable i have to say steering is pretty tight for a compact suv That's kind of what you want. So let's talk performance. So this car has a 1.6 turbocharged four cylinder, made it to a seven speed dual clutch transmission. Output is about 175 horsepower and 195 foot pounds of torque. Kind of kind of sounds small on paper but for a car of this size it's more than enough all right this thing gets up and goes you don't feel the shifts because they're so instantaneous i mean it feels very nice i have no complaints now taking this thing off road i'd probably limit it to just trail riding i'm not sure if the tire set that this car comes with from the factory is perfect for say rock climbing or anything like that but for the sake of just trail riding, going on gravel, things like that, I think it's perfect. Now, as far as amenities go, I think I'm a little confused of why on say like the Kia Soul, you can get dual zone climate controls, but you can't in this one. I'm a little confused on that. And then another thing I would have liked to have in this would just be a heated steering wheel, but I'm just nitpicking at that point because again, you do have heated seats, just been it would have been nice to have a heated steering wheel especially like with an adventure vehicle like this say if you're in alaska or in the rockies and you're just going on an adventure you know you want your mittens to be warm so that that's my other not really complaint but just something i would have wanted them to change another thing that i know i forgot to mention earlier is the fact that this thing comes from the factory with remote start on the key fob which is really nice i actually do like that and kia's system is very very nice all you have to do is literally walk into the vehicle with a key fob and drive that's it you don't have to press start stop or anything like that because i know a lot of other companies and brands make you do that not kia and that is something i really really like they make everything just so intuitive and so straightforward most car companies don't do that so kudos to you kia i am really liking this digital display and i love seeing my all-wheel drive in real time i really do enjoy that that's probably one of my favorite things that kia offers on all their all-wheel drive vehicles really is that's awesome it's got the auto start stop if you like it cool if you don't also cool i'm actually gonna give it some beans here sport mode it's got some pep but it's not gonna blow your mind is it suitable for this car i i think so could they have put maybe a different tuned 1.6 in here like from the forte gt i think they should have if I were to make one critique on performance, I feel like they should have just included that motor versus the smaller one point or the lower output 1.6 from the Soul. 
but even the sole has a little bit more power than this thing. So I wonder why they went a little lower on the power output here. A little confused on that one, but it is what it is. I'm gonna adjust my mirrors here a little bit. I am actually very impressed with the visibility in this car. The visibility is actually incredible, and I think people don't expect that from a vehicle of this size. I mean, I know people personally were like, wow, that's the Seltos? That thing's a lot larger in person than it looks like in pictures. Right, you are. It is actually pretty intense in terms of size. But, again, it's still considered a compact slash subcompact crossover. Let's talk about noise. Noise in this vehicle is fairly loud. I mean, I can tell that the reason why this is not $35,000 is because there's not that much insulation. It's pretty quiet in here, but once you start hitting bumps and things like that, not only do you feel them because of the firm suspension, but you also hear it. And it could be because of the tires they use, or it could be lack of insulation. I don't want to make any assumptions. It could be both, but just something to make note of. You can hear the engine a little bit. It doesn't, it's not really one to listen to often. Because for one, when it is revving its heart out, it doesn't really sound too good or bad. I mean, depending on what you're really expecting out of a car like this. But for the most part, you don't hear too much of it. transmission in this car feels amazing i'm not gonna lie i'm not a fan of putting dual clutches in lower power output cars but in this car i don't know what they did with the transmission tuning or what but it feels really nice it really does and i'm a big fan of it in addition to that no matter where you want the transmission to be in terms of gearing it's always there if you want to gun it it responds quickly very quickly if you want it to be economical it'll downshift for you it knows what gear to be in and that's something very important especially in a car like this and with that performance what can you expect fuel economy wise on the highway between 28 and 32 miles per gallon depending on how you drive if you're in sport mode you'll probably be in the mid 20s and that's with this all-wheel drive system which is also even better but like i said this all-wheel drive system very very cool i mean it can send power to any wheel that it needs to including brake power as well but you have that all-wheel drive lock button so that if you want to do a even 50 50 split between the front and rear axles you can do that which i think is actually pretty cool so i'm curious to see if kia intends to market this car more because i feel like it's missing the mark because a lot of people I've talked to, I'm like, yeah, the Seltos, they're like, what in the world is that? Kia doesn't market this car that much, and I think they're missing the mark on that, no pun intended. I feel like this car is a car that they need to put on the forefront, because this is a really, really good car. You get a lot for your value, or for your money, rather. I mean, $30,000 for a fully loaded car, sunroof, you know, LED lighting all the way around, a little higher ride height, all-wheel drive, a turbo motor with decent output, a Bose audio system. I mean, this thing, you get pretty good technology for the money. So I'm surprised Kia is not doing much with that. So I really hope, Kia, if you're listening, I really hope you do more marketing on this car because this car deserves it. It really does. I'm actually going to take this turn. There's a little bit of body roll, but honestly, this thing is so zippy, it's slightly minuscule, to be honest. You don't feel it too much. Wow. I'm pleasantly surprised slash impressed. This feels really nice. It feels decently planted, which I'm surprised because off-roading vehicles usually they'll have softer suspension especially for tackling boulders and rocks and sand and mud or the streets in this case 
See, as I'm getting into higher speeds, I can definitely hear more road noise. A little bit more road noise. Visibility is still great. Transmission feels nice. And I really do love the look of these LED lights. They just look amazing. And so that is the 2021 Kia Seltos. I hope you liked the video. If you did, definitely, like I said before, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell. You'll get all the latest alerts whenever I upload a video. I've got a ton in store for you guys, and I can't wait to show you guys. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.